Good morning, folks. We've got weather, a deadly earthquake, planet, sun, and space news, but we also have a relevant awakening on our star. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun. It appears to be very quiet. In the opening, we saw the plasma filaments dancing around the limb and even sliding out, but here we just see the southern coronal hole. In 171 angstroms, we can see the filaments again. Watch the left side as those filaments slide out in a big way, along with a sympathetic trigger release on the south. We're going to watch again, tilted 90 degrees. This is large-scale eruptive features like we saw in 2010, just months before the sun fired up once again for sunspot maximum. Could be gearing up for that again soon. Today's solar wind is calm, even calmer than yesterday's with the speed settling into that low range and geomagnetic conditions are calm and quiet too. Earthquake, China. While maximum magnitude reached only 5.8, it was very shallow. There is a lot of damage. At least 13 people are confirmed dead this morning, hundreds injured. We've discussed a lot of cold and snow in the United States, the monsoon failure in Asia, but now the heat comes and settles into that drought zone in India. The few tiny rains they are getting are barely scratching the surface of the problem. Let's dive deep into the oceans with the subsea mission. Link below describes how they're going to try to learn about Enceladus and its ocean processes that create its South Pole jets. It, Europa, and Ganymede are the three top candidates for habitable moons in our system, and this is in that same vein. Quick note of interest, when they go back to the moon, they will be looking for past evidence of major solar blasts. The sodium content in the lunar soil indicates that even as a baby star, our sun was a slow rotator, even slower now. They think that is why we're living on a habitable planet today. Up next, China has chosen its first space station missions. They will be studying space weather health, like from cosmic ray impacts. They will study fire and plasma behavior in space, and will be studying the birth of stars, presumably with that plasma and with the solar and stellar observations they make. Quick note on the sissification of the next generation. All I'll say is that research is like professional athletics. There is no crying and no mercy rule and an ever-growing mountain to ascend in order to publish in the field. If you don't love every moment of the research, then you are in the wrong field, and if you do love it, you can do it all day and never have it feel like work. Sack up, Pierce. You are embarrassing our entire generation. And now we go to space. Folks, we have seen many studies and examples of galactic mergers. It is how the universe organizes material in the different segments of the cosmic web. Today, we learn that the oldest one yet has been discovered. As far as science can see, this is the earliest merger event known in the cosmos. Of course, with each of these systems, we have a Taurus jet feature in the central nucleus, and today, Sphere is reporting a giant leap in cosmic imaging, having dissected the dust and gas to bring us the best jet imaging of its kind in the history of astronomy. Almost as good as some of the images coming out of the national labs. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, you have must-watch Deeper Look episodes. Everyone should be walking away today knowing the sun may have just geared up for a return to activity through the end of the year. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.